Hello everyone, welcome back to Enigma. I am Alfred F. Jones and you are watching Horror Stories with America, with me, America. Today we are going to read two kind of special stories because they were sent in by one of our subscribers, the Japanese Wolf. So thank you so much and enjoy the Japanese Wolf's stories. Story number one, The Black Swan. I had been a ballet dancer for many years in Moscow, Russia. The life was a mixture of recitals and rehearsals. It was perfect. By day I worked at a dance shop selling tap shoes and leotards, and by night I was on stage. One day my shop had gotten a new shipment of point shoes. There was no record of the purchase, nor a return address, but there they were. Boxes of maybe a hundred light pink shoes. We decided not to notify management and just put them in the back. One night I was free. My company had just finished our show of Swan Lake and I worked that night till closing. My coworker and I were curious and decided to go in the back and explore the shoe box. I asked if I could take a pair, seeing as they were free, and she promised she wouldn't tell anyone. We closed up and headed out. I stopped by the ballet studio and was surprised to find the auditorium open. Curiosity got the best of me and I went inside. In Swan Lake, I played the white swan and wanted to dance one of the solo pieces. I sat and laced up the shoes. In hindsight, it should have set off an alarm, but they were extremely tight. I started my dance. It started off with a series of peaks into soda shop. As I was dancing, I could feel my skin begin to sting, as if a thousand needles were being injected. Ignoring the pain I carried on into the pass and arabesque, I could hear music begin to play like an invisible orchestra. The Lac de Singe, the song of the black swan. I tried to stop moving, but my body wouldn't let me, forcing me into a set of 24 fuetes. My fingers stuck together like glue, and my arms started forming black bumps on the surface. Horrified, I let out a scream of anguish, but all that could be heard was a sort of bird-like noise. Black feathers started searing through my skin. An explosion of pain burst through my arms as they expanded into wings. My nose and mouth started molding into a beak, and I was rapidly sinking with every turn. The beak sealed shut, restricting airflow and suffocating me. The music began to fade and in a final pose I collapsed to the ground on a bed of feathers, bones and blood. On to story number two, The Demon Clown. I remember when I was eight, a traveling circus came to town. A faded red sign on the door read, Marlowe the Magnificent and his traveling caravan of wonders. In London, one week only. My mum thought it was a good idea. It kept my older brother Michael out of trouble and it was cheap. I had never been to a circus before. My mum forced my brother into a pinstriped shirt with a bow and me into a blue lace dress with a bright red bow on the back. I remember arriving to the massive red and yellow tent, early to claim seats near the front. We got third row in the center. My mom handed my brother and I 10 pounds to buy snacks while she saved our seats. As we left the tent, the smell of popcorn wafted through the air and laughter and joy could be heard all around. As we approached the candy stand, a tall man with a chilling smile stood behind the counter. He outwardly seemed normal, except his teeth. His teeth were like daggers. What'll it be, little lady? He asked, keeping his grin. Um, I'll take three bags of popcorn, two cotton candies, one pink and one blue, and peanuts, please. I said, nervous. As we headed back inside, I felt an icy grip on my arm. The man had stopped me. Be careful who you trust, honey, and make sure you don't get too close to them. He nodded towards the tent. Enjoy the circus, he said creepily with a smile. 
I turned and ran after my brother. We returned to our seats, our little hands full of sweet and sticky treats. Then the lights dimmed. The ringmaster stepped into a spotlight wearing a bright purple suit, cane and a top hat. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Marlo the Magnificent and this is my traveling circus. The crowd roared. About 20 different performers emerged in flamboyant outfits and colorful makeup. In the darkness of the backstage, I could have sworn I saw a pair of gleaming red eyes. I ignored it and tried to enjoy the rest of the show. The acts consisted of many oddities, such as acrobats with blue skin, contortionists without faces, black lions, and lastly, the clown. During the last act, a clown with white skin and glowing red eyes stepped out from the back. He first rode around on a unicycle, throwing dust everywhere, even at the audience. A few people laughed and kids shrieked with joy as he rode past them. Then he danced around on a pole and did a couple flips and tricks. He took a bow and walked off. The spectators applauded. The ringmaster reappeared and the audience cheered even louder. Thank you all for attending our show. I hope you enjoyed what we had to offer. I regret to inform you that visitation with our cast and actors backstage is strictly forbidden. We have already reserved backstage passes and we are full tonight. But I hope you all return. Have a nice night. And with that, he bowed and walked off as well. I don't exactly remember why, but as we were leaving, I had really wanted to go back into the tent, as if something was drawing me in there. I had sneaked away from my mother and ran back to the tent. I walked around the back and I found an opening. As I walked inside, I could feel a pull leading me deeper inside the tent. I could smell a foul, skunk-like odor and hear a sound like sticks breaking, getting louder and louder, until I reached a room. There was light inside and only a tent flap in the way. I hesitantly pulled the flap back, light temporarily blinding me. As my eyes adjusted, they revealed a horrific sight in the source of the pungent stench. A pool of flesh, blood and bones stained the floor while human-like creatures surrounded it. I could make out fragments of faces and limbs among the mess and some ripped up clothes. I was paralyzed. The creatures seemed to be feasting on the carcasses. Then one of them looked up. Its glowing red eyes locked with mine and he smiled, beckoning me to him. I looked down at the bodies, noticing a common theme, VIP passes. I staggered backwards out of the room and ran out of the tent. I didn't stop until I reached my mother. Later that night, I tried to tell her what had happened. She didn't believe me. No one did. And that's why I'm here, in a hospital, ten years later. Because no one believes me. They all call me crazy, but, but I see what they don't. That they're all clowns. But I'm the one who's laughing now. So thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoyed these stories. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video with all of your friends if you have any. Thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you very soon again. Bye! Le lac de singe, ça change.